Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. I've double-checked my sound today, so it looks like I should be recording my voice as opposed to just uh, miming. So, uh, what I want to show you today, I'm in the process of feeding, feeding yards and also of uh, closing down entrances. And I want to show you a couple of problems here that are some uh, that are uh, due to circumstances and uh, uh, wildlife and some that are due probably entirely due to my own overconfidence here. Uh, let's look at first of all a robbing issue. A lot of people have asked me will open feeding so close to the hives not attract uh, stimulate robbing and up until now I'd say generally speaking I haven't encountered much robbing as a result of that and any hives typically that were being robbed out were typically um, just finishing off hives that I was going to cull anyway. Uh, however, that is uh, not to say, and but that was just basically overconfidence and naivety. Uh, because I haven't lost many hives to robbing, I thought I wouldn't lose many hives to robbing. But in this case, I'm starting in the process of in danger of losing a hive, which would have otherwise been pretty good, um, to robbing. Uh, and that was because I didn't have a cover on very well. And I was using these open feed, using these uh, feeders, bucket feeders, but I had a foam board as a feeder and it wasn't on entirely straight and leaving a gap at the back. And this is what robbing looks like when it gets crazy. So what I've done is I've replaced that foam board with a um, solid inner cover and now these bees are just fighting to get in. They cannot get in here, but up into for the last, for the rest, throughout today, it's now about 10 o'clock in the morning, 10.30 in the morning, these bees were going in here uh, at will. They could have been doing it yesterday. The hive still has a fair amount of weight in it, so it's possible I could save this colony. Uh, but you can see the numbers of bees that have been trying to steal from here is just an overwhelming number. So right now they're just working out that they cannot get through the gap there and so there's a, an entire bottleneck here in traffic jam. So they're starting to try other areas where they couldn't get in before. And they're looking through every crack, gaps in the any gaps in the supers. They can't get in here either but they're trying. And now what I've done is I have reduced the entrance right down with my mouse guard on here to minimize the effect of robbing. And also what I'm doing is I'm making sure nearby hives are the first to get their entrance reducers on as well. So they can defend these colonies much better. Now this robbing frenzy will die off shortly when they realize they can't get in here. Um, and so that is a, something, this is a close call. I may yet lose this colony because it may have been weakened and it could have been that the overwhelming number of robber bees in there resulted in losing the queen, etc. But the last thing I'm gonna do right now is open up that hive. So, fingers crossed, it will be okay. Generally, the other colonies are looking okay, robbing-wise. The only other signs of robbing I see is where sugar syrup may have been leaking from a bucket feeder here. And of course, any effort, they will make every effort now to get into sources of sugar syrup. So, learn by my mistakes. <laughs> Please learn by my mistakes. Don't be overconfident in terms of robbing. Reducing entrances will help to minimize robbing. Making sure that you don't have um, gaps in your supers. Now, had I not had gaps at the top of the hive, that hive would not be getting robbed. But because I have been open feeding, now there aren't a lot of hives around here, but I know there are two or three colonies in the area. Some of them are my customers. But the uh, amount of bees that I've been, been bringing here may have been significant compared to the yard here. Maybe it wasn't. But at any rate, there's no food locally. And so 
rubbing is a potential issue. And that's why I'm reducing entrances, but more of that later. The other thing I wanted to point out was that when clearly, I'm clearly having some issues here with skunks. Now, the way I can tell I've got issues with skunk, this is what the front of the hive typically looks like. The grass is growing up here, that sort of thing. That seems to be okay. But in this area, the grass is getting pulled away from the front of the hive. Now, I've reduced the entrance now, but I'll bet that was a skunk. But even more likely, have a look here. Look how significant this is. The grass has been torn away at the front of the hive. And look at the wood on the landing board. That's been scratched and scratched and sandpapered down. This colony has probably lost a lot of bees to skunks. So, uh, even though there's an electric fence here, this no, that doesn't necessarily keep skunks out. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But uh, reducing the entrance will help. So I'm going around reducing entrances. And I think there's another hive at the far side. It seems the outside edges are particularly vulnerable to the skunks. The skunks don't necessarily go in all the way. Look, this hive's uh, not been bothered here. But over here, look, the grass has been pulled and pulled and pulled. And what the skunk does is he will pull the uh, scratch at the entrance of the hive and get the uh, bees to come out at night and the bees will get eaten up by the skunk. So there's been some, I've been feeding the local wildlife here. Things that you can do is raise the uh, hives further off the ground, um, improve the electric fence. We've got an electric fence here and the farmer's provided this one and he's provided a new solar charger there blinking away. Um, but uh, the other thing, reducing entrances, raising the um, hives further off the ground would be good uh, because then the skunk has to expose his underbelly. Uh, chicken wire in front of the hives would be another thing. Right now I haven't got those with me, but I may come back and try and do some further preventive, preventative measures here. Well, that's quite a sight. A robbing frenzy going on. And there'll be a couple of people that said, I told you so. And they're quite right. Okay. But I want to show you my mistakes as well as my uh, accomplishments. So, yeah, I've uh, got a robbing issue. Uh, something I may have been able to prevent uh, and in this yard I haven't usually had a robbing issue and in all my yards I've got very few hives that are showing robbing as an issue um, but this one was due to a badly fitting top um, so as you can see where they were coming in but still I'm asking for trouble a little bit sometimes when I'm open feeding in a dearth so anyway what I want to do is uh, put on uh, an entrance reducer on this hive. So you can watch as I do that. So I'm taking roughly six inch, inch lengths of wood with a couple of nails pre-tapped in just to make life a little easier. here and these are the cheap and effective mouse guards that I was talking about and because I'm having issues with skunks here I'm going to drive those nails in further just to make sure the skunk can't pull them off so basically, the, uh, I use this type of um, mouse guard here. It's very cheap, it's half, half inch wire mesh, and I use pieces of wood to reduce the entrance as well and hold, and hold it in at the same time. Entrance reducers are very good to help avoid robbing at the entrance. 
Um, I don't use those pieces of wood with little notches in and turn them. Although they may be very effective, it means I can't use entrance feeders. I typically use entrance feeders in the spring, but I don't want to be swapping out all sorts of different types of entrances um, as well. I want one that's going to do for all the different jobs that I'm doing. Now, the only problem with putting a mouse guard on this time of year is that when it comes time to do oxalic acid vaporization, a lot of folks will be using the, the wands that get stuck in the entrance, and of course the mouse guard is in the way. I use a different type of uh, uh, oxalic acid vaporizer, as you'll see in upcoming videos. It's a little jet nozzle that shoots the gas in the vapor inside the entrance, so the mouse guard won't be in the way for me. Um, but you may want to wait another few weeks before you put your mouse guard on. Typically, I'll put a mouse guard on in uh, late October, early November. We're already in the middle of October, but we're having such a warm spell that uh, it seems to be fairly redundant. Uh, it's uh, not ne really needing to just yet. So there we've got some interesting interesting things uh, that I haven't been able to show you before. Some robbing, for sure, and uh, the likelihood of skunks bothering the hive. Uh, so taking precautions against those now, uh, but those are the signs to watch out for. Uh, robbing, you don't want to wait till you're seeing signs like that, but if you see small issues, now obviously this is the sort of thing which is starting the interest in robbing this is more advanced and that is things going berserk this is the last day of temperatures being in the 70s or so so uh, whilst the bees are taking the syrup down quite nicely right now it's going to slow down as the temperatures decrease we go into the 50s, more seasonable temperatures. Normally I wouldn't be able to feed right now, we'd be getting too cold, but uh, we've been lucky and I'm taking advantage of when we can, getting more food in, because it was a, a very uh, lean fall for them, very little nectar flow. Anyway, that's about it. The uh, entrances have been reduced, the uh, feed checked, and uh, I'll be taking some further precautions against skunks if I can. Anyway, that's, the, uh, that's it for here today. I'll clean up and uh, I'm on my way back home to prepare for some other jobs. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer.
See you next time.